This is an Indian man by the name of Sadhu Amar Bharati. As an act of religious devotion, Sadhu held his arm above his head for an unbelievable 40 years and counting. As you can see, Sadhu's arm has withered away to not much more than a stick. In this video, I'm going to explain why the unusual case of Sadhu's arm can help us understand a fundamental truth about the real underlying cause of male pattern baldness. It's a truth that any pharmaceutical company selling hairless drugs would rather you didn't know. But before I go into that, I first want to explain a little bit more about the background science of male pattern baldness. So let me start with the question. Did you ever wonder why there is a pattern in male pattern baldness? It's a funny thing to think, but there's a very specific and scientific reason that our hair starts receding and thinning at the front first and then progressing in the specific M-shaped pattern. This is known as the Hamilton Norwood scale and uses a numbering system to assign specific stages of hair loss to men suffering with androgenetic alopecia or male pattern baldness. You can probably see what number you're at by looking at this image. Men with male pattern baldness typically tend to progress through to the next stage every few years, unless they manage to do something to stop it. Okay, back to the pattern thing. So, do you know why hair loss happens in this very specific pattern? Well, let me show you. This image shows the tensile force of the scalp. The lighter blue colour shows areas of higher scalp tension, where the scalp is being pulled tight like the skin on a drum. The darker blue shows less scalp tension. Now let's take a look at the typical pattern of male pattern baldness as shown in the Hamilton Norwood scale. Notice something weird? Well, the patterns are exactly the same. Tension in the scalp matches exactly the pattern of hair loss that most men experience. In fact, this isn't weird at all. Scalp tension and hair loss are directly connected. Actually, scalp tension causes male pattern hair loss. But how are scalp tension and hair loss connected? Blood flow. When it comes to healthy hair growth, blood flow is everything. Your hair needs blood to survive and grow because nutrients, oxygen and growth hormones are carried in the blood and make up the raw building blocks of the hair follicle. To understand how important blood flow is for healthy cellular growth, we can take another look at the interesting case of Sadhu Amar Bharati again. After more than 40 years holding his arm above his head, the lack of blood flow due to gravity has caused his arm to wither away, making it now basically useless. Cells grow where the blood is strong and the hair follicles are no exception. This is why some Doberman dog breeders who prefer their dogs to have short tails will put an elastic band around a newborn puppy's tail. After 10 days or so, the tail will simply drop off as the elastic band constricts blood supply from reaching the tail. The same is true with the hair on our head. Without strong blood flow, the hair follicles shrink until they eventually fall out. This is known as hair follicle miniaturization. Sadhu's arm started withering away, essentially miniaturizing, because of the lack of blood flow. Hair loss happens in exactly the same way. The hair follicles miniaturize and wither away due to lack of blood flow, which is caused by scalp tension. Eventually, the hair follicles are so weak and undernourished that they just fall out completely. Because of the shape of the human skull and where the muscles are pulling on the scalp, the tension varies, being highest at the front and lowest at the back and typically progressing in the M-shaped pattern. Lack of blood supply follows the same pattern as the tension. Then, hair loss follows the same pattern as the lack of blood supply. The older, mainstream understanding of male pattern baldness is that hair loss is caused by the hormone DHT. But this is really only half of the truth. The most popular hair loss drug is finasteride, also known as Propecia, which chemically blocks DHT by stopping it being converted from testosterone. Finasteride can help regrow a small amount of hair by blocking the DHT. But the problem is the side effects can be severe. Blocking DHT with finasteride throughout the whole body can cause permanent sexual dysfunction. There are even support groups like the Post Finasteride Syndrome Foundation for people with who have ongoing side effects even after stopping finasteride. Like Dr. Michael Zitzman says, using finasteride for hair loss is like shooting at sparrows with cannons. The drug blocks not only the super hormone, but also other hormones that affect thinking and psyche, mood and emotions. And in addition, people who take finasteride can actually become more sensitive to DHT, 
which is why some people report they lose even more hair than before once they stop taking it. My point here is not to scare you, but to show you that blocking DHT does help regrow hair, but using drugs like finasterides, which block DHT throughout the entire body, is extremely risky. Luckily, there is a much better way to block DHT directly in the scalp. And it links back perfectly with what we've just been talking about, blood flow. To quote Professor Freund from the University of Arizona, the enzymatic conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone is oxygen dependent. In low oxygen environments, the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone is favored, whereas in high oxygen environments, more testosterone is converted into estradiol. Or to put it simply, blood carries oxygen, so better blood flow means more oxygen. And more oxygen in the scalp leads to testosterone being converted to estradiol, a normal healthy hormone. But low oxygen, due to low blood flow, leads to more testosterone being converted into dihydrotestosterone. By increasing blood flow, we increase oxygen levels and thereby decrease DHT levels. In fact, back in 1996, a team of scientists led by Dr. Goldman at the University of Michigan designed a study to see whether transcutaneous oxygen concentration, meaning oxygen levels within the capillaries of the skin, was correlated with male pattern baldness. They used nine men suffering with male pattern baldness and nine men for the control group who had no signs of baldness. What they found was that oxygen concentration was significantly lower in the balding areas of the scalp. Areas of the scalp with hair had significantly higher concentrations of oxygen. This makes total sense. More oxygen helps the hair follicle survive and grow, and less oxygen starves the hair follicle and causes more DHT to be produced. So instead of having to take a dangerous drug like finasteride for the rest of your life and having to risk sexual dysfunction to block DHT, you could just increase the blood flow to your scalp directly, and that would block the DHT right where it needs to be blocked. No side effects, no costly drugs, just good old-fashioned oxygen. Who would have thought of it? To quickly recap what we've learned, scalp tension reduces blood supply to the hair follicles. This lack of blood supply is a twofold blow for the hair follicles because it starves them of what they need to grow whilst also increasing DHT levels. So, let me ask you a question. With all this in mind, do you think that if you could reduce the scalp tension, this would help hair regrow? Or do you think that all this is just theory and it wouldn't play out in real life? Well, luckily, we don't have to guess. We can look at three separate medical studies which tested this hypothesis that scalp tension causes hair loss and answered the question. Does hair start regrowing when the scalp tension is reduced? The first study which shows how this theory plays out in real life involved relaxing the muscles around the perimeter of the scalp. With the scalp muscles more relaxed, the researchers believed that scalp tension would be reduced and the participants with male pattern baldness would start regrowing their hair. The researchers used Botox injections to relax the muscles in the scalp, just like how Botox is used normally to relax the muscles in the forehead. Lo and behold, after 48 weeks, hair regrew by 18% similar to the results reported with Propecia. A similar study was conducted in 2017, where patients' scalps were injected with Botox to relax the muscles and reduce the tension. Again, the results were impressive. Out of 10 male patients, 8 had good to excellent results on a photographic assessment. The second study, which tests the scalp tension theory, took place in 2012 at the University of Hong Kong. Researchers theorized that by massaging the scalps of participants, they would be able to boost blood flow and reduce the tension. They found that hair thickness was shown to increase with standardized scalp massage. Again, proving the scalp tension theory of hair loss plays out in real life. The third study that I want to highlight took place at the School of Medicine of University of Fukuoka in Japan, where researchers used a new device to push the scalp upwards and relieve tension that way. They found that the scalp is pushed up to relieve tension on the vertex. The efficacy rate of hair growth in alopecia patients was 40%. By simply pushing the scalp upwards to relieve the tension mechanically, a 40% effectiveness rate was achieved, and the photographic assessments confirm obvious hair regrowth took place. So, in summary of these three studies, Botox relaxed the muscles in the perimeter of the scalp, 
reducing scalp tension and allowing the hair to regrow. Scalp massages reduce the scalp tension directly by stretching out the skin and muscles and the amount of hair regrown was incredibly impressive. And finally, using a new device to push the scalp upwards was proven effective to regrow hair in a Japanese study with a 40% effectiveness rate with impressive visible results. Now let's do a quick recap on what we've learned so far from the beginning. Scalp tension and hair loss appear to be highly correlated. Areas of high scalp tension are also the areas where hair loss takes place first. Low tension areas also have more hair, which is why male pattern baldness takes place in a predictable pattern. This scalp tension causes hair loss because the tension constricts blood flow to the capillaries feeding the hair follicle. This blood flow carries oxygen, nutrients, and growth hormones needed for the follicle to survive. A study confirmed that low oxygen concentration in the scalp correlated with balding areas of the scalp. DHT in the scalp is oxygen dependent, less oxygen equals more DHT. So by increasing oxygen in the scalp, we can very effectively block DHT. This isn't just theory. We highlighted three separate studies that proved by reducing scalp tension, by relaxing the perimeter muscles with Botox, by reducing tension with specific massages, and by pushing the scalp upwards, that hair started growing on previously bald areas after a few months. The problem is Botox is extremely expensive and requires a trained medical professional and a visit to a clinic and the participants in the massage study had a trained professional administering their massages. Both of those options are hard work, time consuming and expensive. Luckily, there is a better way to reduce the scalp tension and boost blood flow back into the scalp, which anybody can use to make their hair grow. This is called a grow band. By inflating an inner tube, the device pushes the scalp upwards, reducing scalp tension and allowing blood to flow back into the scalp. The motion of inflation and deflation stretches out the scalp, whilst causing the top of the scalp to crease together, essentially massaging itself and pumping blood back into the vertex of the scalp. In just 10 minutes per day of inflation and deflation, you'll be able to feel less tension in your scalp, more movement around the sides and more sensation in the vertex. If you've ever sat on your hand for 10 minutes until it went numb, you'll recognize the sensation of blood starting to flow back into your hand and the numb feeling going away. In one experiment with the grow band, we wanted to find out if scalp skin temperatures increased after 10 minutes of use. Interestingly, there was a significant increase in scalp surface temperature as the skin became flushed with warm blood, which lasted up to 30 minutes after stopping. When you use the grow band, you'll also notice how the skin creases during inflation in much the same way as a scalp massage would. Just like the 2012 study of scalp massages, which got some incredible results. Using the grow band for 10 minutes per day essentially pinches and massages the entire upper scalp, as well as reducing tension and boosting blood flow as seen in the skin temperature experiment. Will, the founder of HairGuard, said that using the grow band for just 10 minutes each day has played a major role in regrowing his healthy hair. There are five main reasons why anyone with male pattern hair loss should use the grow band. It's simple and easy to use for 10 minutes per day. Simply sit in a comfortable chair and position the device correctly on your head and then use the hand pump to inflate and deflate it. It's enjoyable to use. Scalp tension can cause discomfort and tension related headaches. The grow band reduces tension, making your scalp feel so much better and increasing sensation in the top. Scalp tension can also cause an itchy scalp and dryness as the skin gets stretched out. Reducing the tension has been reported to help with itchiness and dryness. There are also no ongoing costs. Pay once and use it forever. If you take finasteride, for example, you'll have to pay for it monthly, which could add up to more than $300 per year or $1,500 over five years. And remember, finasteride needs to be taken every day for life to continue seeing results. There are also no side effects. Unlike finasteride, which can cause sexual dysfunction due to it interfering with our hormones, the grow band has no side effects. And finally, this might be the most important point, but the grow band works at the root cause of pattern hair loss by addressing the scalp tension. So how do you use the grow band? The grow band is really easy to use. Place it on your head deflated. What you want to do is find the right position. You'll know it's in the right position when it inflates and causes your scalp to rise up. What you should be aiming for is the scalp rising up. 
This shows it's reducing the tension and relaxing the scalp all around the perimeter. You should inflate the band to the point where the scalp stops rising up anymore. Don't keep inflating after this point because extra pressure won't help remove more tension. So position on the head for maximum scalp movement, inflate until movement stops, hold for 5 seconds, then deflate and start over again. It's amazing, you'll start to feel your scalp warming up and you'll get more feeling and sensation in the top of your scalp. Your scalp will feel much more relaxed and comfortable afterwards and often less itchy. It's almost like that feeling of relaxation after a good massage. Now that probably sounds like a lot to take in, so let's have a quick recap. The pattern in male pattern baldness is caused by scalp tension. Hair follicles need nutrients and oxygen from the blood to grow properly. Multiple studies have shown that reducing this scalp tension through various different means, such as Botox or scalp massage, positively cause hair regrowth in a matter of months. The easiest, simplest and fastest way to remove the scalp tension is with the grow band, which lifts the perimeter of the scalp upwards, helping reduce the tension and boost blood flow. The grow band is only available from hair guard, so if you have the typical M-shaped pattern of hair loss which is caused by scalp tension, you'll definitely want to consider trying the grow band. Hairscience.com say the grow band device releases pressure on the back and sides of the head through the inflation of an inner tube, thus increasing blood flow through the vertex of the scalp and allowing the hairs to regrow themselves by way of increased oxygen and nutrient levels and lower DHT. Myself and the hair guard team have put a lot of time into researching all the best information that we could find about scalp tension and hair loss and we created this video for you to learn from. Now the thing is, a lot of people that are out there giving hair loss advice aren't talking about scalp tension and hair loss, but the science seems to show a clear link between the two. I'm very interested, what do you guys think? Do you think there's a link between scalp tension and hair loss? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to find any more about the grow band, then head over to hairguard.com and if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.